Welcome everybody to NWSL Live. I am Jordan Angelia, your host as always. And I wanna let you guys know, we've got a very special show for you today. Now we not only have one, but two special guests and we're gonna come at you with a little bit different of a format. If you've been joining us for the last few weeks, you kind of get a sense of what we're gonna bring you with NWSL Live. It's really the ins and outs of what's happening on and off the field in NWSL, but today, is a little different. Before we dive into that, I'm going to bring in my two co-hosts, the experts, Lori Lindsay, former MWS, NWSL player, and Jeff Kasuf of Equalizer Soccer. You guys, how are you doing today? Doing good. Fantastic. What a yeah. wild week. <laughs> what a wild week. It's been fun. I know, Lori, you and I have been busy, but Jeff, you've been busy, man, right in and getting on all these calls, right? Yeah, not quite as busy as our guests, I don't think, but definitely uh, some long days. <laughs> so what we're speaking to and why this is such a special edition is because big news in professional sports this week, NWSL will be the first professional league to be back in action as they announce their plans for the Challenge Cup this summer in Utah. The games will start June 27th. It'll be 25 games. And with that, I think we should bring in the woman of the hour, the lady who knows all about this. Our new commissioner in NWSL, Lisa Baird, is joining us. Lisa, welcome. Well, thanks for having me. Very happy to be here. How are you guys? We're great. Good. Kind of big week. Huge week. <laughs> I think, That's what we're saying. I think we have to start with this. March 10th was your first date as NWSL commissioner. It has been a wild week or <laughs> wild month. It feels like a week sometimes, right? Wild month, not only in NWSL, in the world. And you've handled it so well. First, we just want to say we are so excited that you are NWSL commissioner. Congratulations on that. Thank you. I yes. really appreciate it. It's, it's the welcome has been really warm and uh, like, I'm really happy to be here. As I said, I was, it's, it's kind of a dream job for me. So we'll leave it that way. Yes. We love that. Well, we are so excited to talk to you because the big news, we just talked about it. The challenge cup happening in Utah is what everybody is chatting about. And we know that uh, you might have some plans of your own here. You want to ask us a few questions, so we'll get to those <laughs> along do. the way too. But we're gonna start. We're gonna start off with Lori Lindsay. She wants to get yeah. after this and get. We want to dig in a little bit more and learn more about the Challenge Cup. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, hi, Lisa. Thanks again, and echoing the sentiments that Jordan just said. Congratulations on the commissioner job, and thank goodness. Actually, I mean, can you imagine like trying to navigate all of this? Um, without a commissioner. So we're grateful to have you on the show, but in the league as well. So, well, thanks uh, so much. I appreciate it. And so let's dive in for the Challenge Cup. When when did this start, um, this idea start to take shape? When did it become like kind of a clear path that this was like, this is the direction the league needs to take? Well, I think early on, we were really, we were looking at a number of different options and we looked, we evaluated a couple of different options to allow us to have more of a regular season. And I think there was a moment in time where we were very worried about kind of just the fact that we didn't have a good sight line into what was going to happen all season long. We weren't sure if fans couldn't come back. So there are a lot of variables. Um, after we cycled through that, we really landed on the concept of doing something in a shorter frame of time to kick off the season. And, um, you know, I'm not sure who came up with the idea. I, you know, I would say a number of people said, well, what about some kind of tournament? Um, and I can't remember whose idea it was. It might have been a bunch of people's. I think we, we did a survey of our owners and a couple of the owners sent in the idea. But um, what I had wanted to see was something um, because right about the same time, the Olympics uh, moved to um, 2021. And I know how uh, much Americans look forward to the Olympics every year and look forward to watching the tournament. I said, hey, guys, why don't we do an Olympic style tournament? And I think it was the team, the competition committee um, played a big role in it. Uh, my team, Liz Dalton, who many of you know, and um, Vicki Rich, who deserve a ton of credit for really putting pen to paper. And they were the one that came up with the format, including the first part, um, which has got the preliminary rounds. It's, I've been, I keep getting corrected. It's not group play, it's preliminary rounds. And then we'll go right into the, the knockout single elimination. And if you think about it, 
that's a style that um, all Americans are used to watching. So we're hoping we're going to get blockbuster ratings. And and just one addition to that, we're um, in terms of this kind of like tournament style, did you have any collaboration with other leagues, not only in the US, but like around the world and kind of figuring out what they were doing or some different ideas they were throwing around? Not in terms of the competition format, um, but in terms of like how they were approaching writing the medical protocols and how they were doing that. That I would say there was a lot of collaboration. Um, and I got a lot of help um, from US soccer, from MLS, and also from the, the other leagues as well as I was reaching out to try and navigate putting together the protocols for that. Um, but the tournament, we really came up with our own format. I think other people did it and maybe some people are gonna revert to that, but I think we were pretty crisp that when a regular season wasn't possible, that's where we wanted to go. We knew that was our option. Lisa, you, you've talked about um, already, and in, in probably you've done many interviews already since this announcement, but that, that being first back among the leagues wasn't necessarily a, a driver or a factor, but it's shaping up that that might be the case, um, or, or looks like it will be the I case in the, in the U.S. I keep asking for a reporter <laughs> to confirm that for me, because I think Julie asked, it, asked me that on the media call yesterday, and I'm like, I don't know. How would I know that? I don't know. You guys know yeah. that. You're so focused in end of your show. <laughs> I'm just working, yeah, on my own, like on our own thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, so based on, you know, other major league plans, MLB, NBA, NHL, um, yeah. MLS. So I'm wondering, you know, even, you know, obviously health was first and foremost, but yeah. what do you see as kind of maybe the advantages of having that spotlight that maybe is unprecedented in terms of those leagues not yet being up and running. And, and really the key, I think, how do you foresee retaining that attention into the next year and beyond? Uh -huh. Therein lies the great question, Jeff, and I knew it would, you'd ask it. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I think there's two things. We're definitely going to take, how about, let's say this, well, it wasn't really the intention to be first. Um, we wanted to be safe. We wanted to get to a venue that could host us well, we're gonna take advantage of the fact that we're first. So that that we will clearly do. Um, and I think the key is to, to, to remember, there's still a vast majority of Americans that are still, we have to teach them to love soccer, right? We still have that. We have to teach them to love women, uh, professional soccer. And what I've learned with the Olympics with some really hard to understand sports is involve them in the stories of the athletes. Lead with the athletes first, always. And, and that's something of value that I, I really um, hold dear to my heart. So I think you'll see us telling a lot of the stories of the athletes. And what I know about you know audiences that they wanna fall in love and they wanna follow these um, amazing athletes and the teams. So I think with this one, because it's such a short tournament, we're gonna really lean into that in the first part of it. Coming out of it, you know, I, I don't have every answer figured out, um, but I think the more Americans we can get to watch, the more Americans we can get to engage. And I'm happy to also talk about the fact that we have Twitch as an international distribution partner. That's something that I think is really important because, you know, we have over 50 international players in our league. And I think that they're going to get, we're going to get, you know, that rooting from home for, for, for her from home. Um, I think that will be important. But what we're going to do to continue to the momentum, I think, has to be determined. Here's my first question. What would you do? If well, we had this opportunity, or what would Jeff do? Yeah. You go, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, what would you do to continue? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think your point about storytelling is a huge one. Um, you know, it's obviously uh, near and dear to my heart, I guess, in terms of what I do and what we do. Um, yeah. And it's probably been a void that's not been filled. And honestly, uh, we've got it on screen here from Anna. Our, <laughs> our number one requested thing in our Instagram post in this has been, are you doing reality TV shows from the village for the players? They want... I, I, I saw that suggestion. <laughs> and it's going up into the commissioner's suggestion box. Um, I, I think adding, asking our athletes to fill themselves while they're competing at the top of their game is kind of a big ask. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'll put it in the suggestion box because I, I always like to, to have major um, ideas entertained from fans. Sorry. Yeah. Ah, that's the phone. Sorry about that. I'm just going to let it. Hey, this is real life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's some boy trying to date a daughter. Is what that is. <laughs> See, this is reality, reality TV. TV. I mean, let's get this. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's a reality show. My house and the boys that are yeah calling. Uh, mom. <laughs> well, I, I think that storytelling aspect is exactly why a lot of us probably fall in love with the Olympics, right? Is we, f I have a new favorite athlete every single day. Yeah. There is such an opportunity with this tournament, with having everybody there to storytell in a different manner. And I think one of the things I think of is CBS being such a big sponsor and a big supporter, the broadcast partner of the league now you mentioned Twitch already. What is going to be done there to help fans see the games? I know a couple games are on CBS, but can you explain the entire broadcasts? Um, the yeah. So, broadcast? you know, I'd love to say that this was all, you know, well thought through for months and months, because usually, you know, with the planning of a big season, you have, you know, a lot of runway to do your promotion plan, but we're already hard at work with CBS and we will be with Twitch um, to kind of do that run up, that promotion, that tune in um, on Twitch and on CBS. And um, that's the key to getting great ratings. It really is like make sure people know when it's on, where it's on, who they're going to see, what are the rivalries between the teams. And that's something you guys could help me with because I'm not sure what the natural rivalries are, um, you know. There's always that fun going back and forth. And we have a couple things that, um, you know, we're going to surprise you with maybe as soon as Monday. Um, so I can't tell everything on, on NWSL Live, but <laughs> um, tell -all right here. People, to keep people engaged in, you know, in kind of these stories and what's going to happen and the team angle, the, the athlete angle. Um, and the thing that I find that I wanted to lead with, and, I, and it was really important to us as a team as we worked through this was how much we collaborated with our um, NWSL PA to make this um, about not just the league, not just the clubs, but the players as well. And um, Yael and Brooke were invaluable in helping get that story told. And I'll tell you what, they, um, they, they got a lot of the um, coverage on the first day out. And I'm, I'm really glad, I'm really glad for our players and I'm glad for them. Yeah. I think, you know, I was going to ask about that too, Lisa. I mean, I think one of the great stories out of this besides returning to play in the tournament is just the collaboration um, with the players association and really kind of leaning on the players and what they felt comfortable with. And I think that is important to have a, for the takeaway and all of this as well. Um, yeah. In regards to that, though, um, looking forward to the fall, um, can you speak to that at all? Um, I guess this is a two-part question. Um, are you going to kind of wait and see how the, how the tournament pans out um, and to see if there's any sort of return to play in the fall? And then secondly, I guess, if there isn't, um, with the Players Association, um, fortunately for the players, there's guaranteed contracts and health insurance. So what is their requirements if there isn't? Um, return to play in the fall in terms of them being in market and training um, with their teams? Well, I think what I want to do is make sure that the tournament is executed excellently. I'd love to say flawlessly. I think that, you know, we'll have, you know, we'll, we'll have a couple hiccups for sure in terms of, you know, maybe, you know, it's, it's, it's a big, um, it's going to be a big challenge for all of us. We're a small league. And we want to make this um, a standard that, you know, the players are going to have a great time. The fans at home watching are have a great time. But I think so the focus right now is 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 really going to be on um, making the tournament excellent. I think, though, we'll learn some things from the tournament. And I'm not sure what it's going to be. Sometimes those like what will the fans at home really respond to? That's a question for me. This is a different format for them. Um, is it something they're going to want to see again? Like, how, would we change anything about our regular season? Will we will we do things differently? Um, one of the things I'm really anxious is to make sure that we're doing programming more year round that engages um, our our passionate fans. So um, this is an opportunity for us to really kind of look at a postseason or even a preseason and, and make it pretty exciting, particularly because we have Louisville coming in next year. So that expansion draft and the draft are definitely on our minds. Um, and, they, you know, we've got to time those out given um, where we are this year.
So I, I'd love to come up with something off the top of my head, but right now I'd, I think I'd like a little bit of time to to study and learn a little more. Yeah. Lisa, the, I mean, one obvious way I think that fans can support from a distance is watching, subscribing to CBS All Access. Um, wondering what else maybe they can do, certainly for their local teams and even kind of an extension of that. Are there creative ways to make sure that teams are maybe use, engaging their local sponsors or local partnerships they have, if that's even importing a field board or something? You know, if, if, is there, are there thoughts about that? Yeah, we've been doing a lot of thinking about that. And you're going to see us do a couple things that um, because we want to, uh, I don't know what it's like to play to a stadium without anybody there. That's a no novel thing. And, you know, I, I don't know what that's going to be like. I haven't um, really um, kind of found anybody that's come to that. So the first thing we're doing is we're going to be um, launching um soon through our teams a virtual cheering section at home so that's going to be a new uh exciting thing yep that we'll be launching soon and um uh just stay tuned for some details on that um uh we will be um uh looking at ways to engage people through nwslsoccer.com as well as the digital assets of cbs so i think um that's important and also with twitch um, not only for the international distribution, but we found a pretty excited audience about the uh, women's uh, women's professional soccer on Twitch. So um, there's some uh, some things that we're going to do with Twitch that are um, exclusive just to them that I think are pretty exciting. Yeah, and again, virtual. you might see it as soon as Monday. <laughs> so, Ooh, I like all these teasers. Cool. These yeah. teasers. <laughs> <laughs> You've done this before, huh? Tune in on Monday. Tune in on Monday. <laughs> right? Tune in on Monday is right. I just, uh, before maybe we can get to some, we've got a lot of questions from fans, so I want to bring a couple yeah. of those in. I just want to say, one thing how cool it is from our standpoint of as people working in nwsl and having played Lori and myself in nwsl um, for a number of years that these sponsors that have now joined with the league we have to mention p and g verizon budweiser secret um how important is teaming up with them right now before this tournament it's really critical um there are two reasons you know not only look the national sponsorships at the league and this year when there's no uh, ability for fans to be in local games, the regular season are even more critically important. Um, it's helping us to um, fund the tournament. But uh, honestly, we really, really needed that national sponsorship um, for our owners to make the commitment um, to continue to pay the health benefits for the rest of the year. So if you get a chance, um, you know, please thank them. Um, because that was really important to myself and to Brooke and Yael um, uh, in the announcement. Um, but the other fun, the other fun thing that you'll find is it's always been a mandate of mine to partner with the world's best marketers. Um, they are a megaphone for our athlete stories, our um, our you know excitement to fans. So um, I've only had one meeting, um, and it was an early meeting with Budweiser. Um, because we were starting to plan their regular season campaign. And you can always expect Budweiser to do magnificent marketing. And I think you can expect it this year as well. But now that um, P&G, Secret, and Verizon are on our board, I think you're going to find that their marketing really gets across the values of our league, the excitement of our fans. And I think you're going to see a lot about the strong women um, athletes of the NWSL from Secret. That's that's really important to them that they be seen as supporting that. So I'm really excited about that. And then I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about our sponsor, Nike, um, who's been with us forever. Um, and, um, you know, you can't like, you know, you can't ask for a better lineup of marketers to help um, convey our messaging and those stories. Yes, I think that is is so true. We even, those are so many things that we wanted here too on NWSL Live. We wanted to have a happy hour segment so we could cheer <laughs> to Budweiser yeah. because they are amazing. You know, we continue to see their support all the time. But um, 
one of our segments is always on the players and who these players yeah. are and the players that, um, you know, we want to tell the stories of these players that maybe people don't know and they need to know more of. So uh, we are right on there on that same page with you. So um, just appreciate that. You know, we're all right, so we're all there. Sign up for the NS NWSL newsletter. Um, fans, sign up online. Go to nwslsoccer.com and sign up because that's where we're telling the stories of athletes, and you can get it direct in your email box. How easy is that? So love it. Love it. Are you able to stay a couple more minutes? And we've got a couple yeah. of questions I want to get to here. And um, Lori looks like she has a question too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, I have one more, Lisa. Uh, I know there's been some uh, floating around Twitter and some of the media about international players and with the travel restriction and making their way um, over for this tournament. Uh, any any thoughts on that or any yeah, answers in terms of really the likelihood? Really, and the government has reached out to us. The White House reached out to us to make sure that we are um, uh, comprehended in their exemption program. We're really working hard because it was announced pretty quickly. So we're working hard to get the details because you need specific details to get it to them. Um, having our international players play with us is is a paramount importance. So, um, ah! okay. <laughs> Listen, a small town Iowa, okay? It's oh like Lord. alarms are going off. Oh my God. <laughs> it's reality TV. I'm so sorry. It happens like every <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> I thought Welcome that's when like the, yeah. so live. that's no, when we hit you with the big questions when that siren. Well, okay. So the, I was on a phone call. I was invited to uh, the people called the commissioners in the White House. True story. This was a few weeks ago, and I thought it was going to be one where we were going to listen, and it was going to be President Trump and Secretary Mnuchin and all these people talking. And I was ready to listen, and you know that's why I was there. I'm new. What do I know? <laughs> So then all of a sudden they start going around talking to the commissioners and say, well, you say something, you say something. And then he goes, Lisa Baird, you say something. And at the exact same moment, I kid you not, my cell phone rang. And I went, no. It's ringing right there. And I threw it. I chucked it to my daughter, my daughter and she threw it outside the house. And I tried to go on in a composed fashion. But, oh, oh, my God. Yourself. You never know what's going to happen. I have yeah. a mute. Oh, it's still happening. I muted Lori for the time being. Um, I'll Lori, let you know. You, you, yeah, you keep fine. us updated. Okay, some of these questions. The first one, um, Dave, and apologies, this is the best we can do. Jeff, you're doing a good job of coming above the, the questions when they pop in. Dave here, how will the group stage matches for the Challenge Cup be determined? And you call them preliminary matches, correct? Yeah, we're calling them preliminary okay. rounds. And um, uh, how about this? Tune in on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Tune in on Monday. Okay, I like that. I like that. Um, Tune in. I know we had. A, we're having a lot of love too, just with this uh, Twitch partnership. There's a lot of people I saying know. they love Twitch, and so I just wanted to share that. Um, I think this is uh, interesting. Just Taya Robinson, are you? Have you been talking with WNBA and other sports leagues? Is that something that has mm -hmm. been ongoing during this time as well? Yeah. And, you know, I'm pretty humble. I've talked to Kathy once and I've talked to Val Ackerman um, of the Big East Commissioner. I've been, you know, emailing with uh, my friends at the NBA. They were really helpful. Um, you know, I've been longtime friends with them. I've had the and, you know, the, the NHL, not as much, although I know them. I think what was nice about um, me coming in is I'd so I knew so many people at the sports leagues because I worked at the NFL, but I work with all the sports league in the Olympics because you work with all the leagues anyway. Um, and um, the USO OPC was really helpful to me because I was a new commissioner. I had a, a really big challenge on day three. And they, I have to say, I'm, I'm very humble in that. I'm brand new and I can always learn from people. And everybody at the other leagues, MLS, Don Garber, US Soccer with Will Wilson, they've been really, really helpful and just, just helping with information, learning, education where they can, resources where they can, and I'm I'm really grateful. I, I am because you know you need help when you're coming in this job, and you need help when you're coming in this job, and there's a crisis. Yeah. Uh, okay. One more little suggestion here. Monica is saying, um, and I don't even think this has to be the fall. Just an idea yeah. about it, an all star game, but even a skills challenge. I mean, you're going to have all the players there. This could be. I mean, throw it in that hat you were talking about earlier. 
the idea yeah, hat. So tune in on Monday. I don't on Monday. Monday. <laughs> no, I actually think that's a really good idea. Yeah. So Monica, hey, Monica, Monica, it's a really good idea. So let's, let's see. Well, I'm putting it in the commissioner's suggestion box. I Monica. love it. Good idea. Um, I can't find it at this second. There are so many comments um, strolling in, but one of the things I just want to say, this is over and over and over again. There's so many positive things being said about you, Lisa, and I think we would echo that absolutely. <laughs> it's just um, from what you just said about how much you are leaning on other people and learning, but you really are leading in a way that I feel like is really strong and, and showing the best about this league. So we're just um, can't say any enough good things about that. Well, thanks. I, I hope I can live up to that. I, I really, you know, I just want this. I want professional women's soccer to succeed. I want us to be, you know, like, even though we're small, you know, we, we're really, we've got the best women's soccer players on the planet playing in our league. We have enormous support from fans. We have enormous support from corporate America. We're with the best broadcasters, CBS and Twitch in, in the business. So, um, you know, I, I think good things sometimes come in small bo boxes. And I think this year, and, and I'll say it's pretty sobering. I just feel like America is rooting for not just women's sport to succeed, but for small businesses. You know, it's a tough year for everybody. Um, but if a small business succeed, and I, I just feel like, you know, it'll be something that a lot of Americans can, you know, really connect with. So we'll do you guys tell that story too. Yes. Uh, Lisa, we have taken up a big chunk of your time. So just want to say thank wait, you wait, so wait. much. I didn't get my chance. Well, you didn't get any questions. <laughs> Bring it. This is prepared. Okay. That was our plan all along. <laughs> now, Mr. Suggestion Box, rapid round, Jordan, Lori, Jeff. What's number one in the commissioner's suggestion box for for me? Rapid round fire. For the challenge cup? Yeah, no, for the challenge cup, for anything you want. What's your suggestion for the commissioner's suggestion box? Ooh. I, I yeah. wanna see I wanna see um some kind of like and I don't know how many play, how the players are going to interact, if they are going to be able to interact with other teams during this. But there are so many good stories that um, players from different teams share in common because they've been playing in the league now for eight seasons. Yeah. Right. And so can we get uh, stories that maybe haven't been told in a certain way because you have a player from North Carolina and a player from Houston who were there at the same time who had this commonality or a, a really cool story to share. So I think it's just the ability to have all those players in one place is going to come, it's going to present some really cool opportunities. I love that idea. Thanks. Yeah, I'd probably echo that a little bit. I mean, I know we've talked a lot about story time, but something I've been talking to people behind the scenes and, and in front for years has just been like, I think you can look at MLS and see what a robust digital network can do for a league. I mean, 10 years ago, yeah. what, what that did for them. Um, and I think there's a real opportunity there for a connected, full-on um, digital network, the storytelling and, and everything around it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good idea. And also what, a, um, you know, and again, I think that's the best is like, that's what m makes this league is the behind the scenes or like the, knowing the players, getting to know the players and the signing of autographs. So what about like a lead up to the actual tournament and how the preparation is going some behind this more behind the scenes than we've actually seen, because I think that's a big story there is we've had off for several, several months and how is that going and what's the ramp up phase yeah. like? Yeah, I do. But, I do have a pressing question for you that I've always asked: the trophy. That's in my commit. Is that a? It, we're gonna have a different trophy for the Challenge Cup. A cup. Yeah. Okay. Possibly. Put it on Monday. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The following Monday, actually. <laughs> the following Monday, actually. <laughs> for the NW the 2020 NWSL Challenge Cup. Yes, absolutely. Presented by P&G and Secret. So we're going to have a different trophy. We're really excited about it. And um, again, tune in, fans. Stay tuned in. Tell your friends. Sign up for our newsletter. Send. Um, I'll, I'll start a hashtag commissioner suggestion box. That's a little long. I like that. Commissioner suggestion box. I'm in. 
I got okay. skills. I got athlete stories. I've got connected digital. I got a lot to a lot, a lot more work to do. Yeah, like the all <laughs> access. I really liked Lori's all access of the lead I up. Do too. It's kind of like a um, you know other what we get to when we look into NFL teams or um, like training some camp. of the training. Lori, yeah. can you do me a favor and call all the coaches and ask them if we could get all access. Done. Done. Yeah. That's Done. A good one. yeah. All right. Uh, that's what we need. Perfectly. Yeah. So I got you. Yeah. Get me in there. All that's right. Cool. Okay. And um, we're going to tweet, th we're going to tweet that out. So you tweet it. We'll all retweet it. We'll get some good suggestions for you, Lisa. Thank right. you so much for everything, for your leadership. And we can't wait. We'll um, hopefully be seeing more of you uh, at the challenge cup. Well, you, I, I hope so. Um, by then I'll be fully um, with my mask on. So I'm getting used to that. I do it all the time now. So yeah. you'll see me there and um, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll get to, I'll get invited back. Yeah. All right. Take care. Absolutely Thank Perfect. you Thanks, so Lisa. much. Bye Lisa. Have a good night. Bye. What a great conversation there. There's still things flowing in. Um, we've got minute to win it challenges with the players in good the <laughs> some good ideas. Um, I, I was also curious about the cup. Like, or is it is it going to be filled with Budweiser so they can also drink Budweiser straight away? Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Um, I you guys played in WPS when really was that was the last time we had an All Star game. And mm -hmm. there was the Marta versus Abby game, which mm -hmm. actually predated the NHL doing that pick 'em style. Mm -hmm. And the skills challenge idea from somebody, big fan of that. And you can do that during this tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can be fun. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of things. I mean, we have the Mewis sisters, right? There's some yeah. different stories that you don't always get to tell, and they're gonna be right there together. So there's stories, even you know, of course, you guys know me and the challenges I had with injury, but there's there's multiple players there that are going to be have have come over the same injury or the moms are all going to be together can you have a round table where they're they're talking about these things you know without any restrictions just the, this free conversation about what it was like for them getting to where they are or, um, people from the same club like there's so many things that that could be really cool and um Gosh, there are so many comments coming in. I see them all and I appreciate them all, but you guys, we have more people to talk to. How about that? There is still one more guest on this and we're gonna roll right along. We are gonna bring in the NWSL PA president, Tori Huster joins us now. Hello, Tori. Uh, hello guys. <laughs> How are you? Um, I'm good, hi. thank you for having me. <laughs> we are so excited to have you. It's been a big week. And for you, it's probably been a long few months because uh, as president of the NWSL Players Association, you have been in the thick of all of this. Yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> right off the bat, I have to give all of the credit to Yael Averbush and Brooke Elby. They have been running the front lines for us. And um, that's not to say we haven't had input as players, but they are really doing the dirty work and they have secured so much for us as players. And I think because they aren't too far removed from, from the, from the player style, they, um, obviously have a really good handle on what we need and, um, our communication between all six of us that sit on the board has been phenomenal. So it's been, it's been, they've been a pleasure to work with for sure. Lori, I'm going to start with you. If you want to keep rolling with questions for Tori, I know that we could chat with her all day. So we'll, we'll take about 20 minutes here, Tori, and get not only into this, but into some ideas that are really dig into why you play and who Tori Huster is. So Lori, why don't you start us off? Well, hello, friend. Um, <laughs> well, we will um, end you with um, all of the the happenings this week, we kind of really, like Jordan said, want to dive into like more of like what keeps you going. Um, one of only a handful of players to have played with a single one team in all eight seasons. Um, so can you, this is pretty broad, but many ups and downs. I think you've gone to the final, uh, unfortunately lost in the final. We had some wild few years at the very beginning of the league <laughs> that we experienced together. Um, but you know, a life of a typical professional athlete, the ups and downs. So can you kind of just delve into what has kept you going? What's kept you motivated? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> it's pure love of the game. Um, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't love it. I don't think anybody in the league would be playing if they didn't love it. Um, I think that the ups and downs have helped me grow as a player. I think the the bad seasons have helped me grow even more than, say, the best seasons. Um, I think a lot of times the bad seasons keep me motivated to, to still play. Um, that's not to say along the way, you know, with injuries and um, some days, some, some seasons you don't play as much. Um, those things definitely play on your mind. And I think that has been a work in progress for me, certainly throughout my professional career, just trying to maintain a good level of mental fitness or mental health. Um, that's been really important for me. Um, I think I, in the position that I am in now, um, being at the same club for eight years, that is, I am so fortunate to be in that place. I don't think there's many people in the league that have been with the same club. A lot of people have had to deal with trades. They've had to deal with waves. Um, I've been very fortunate to play at the spirit for as long as I have. And, um, that I, there's not a way that I can thank them enough for, um, believing in me for as long as they have. And I, I really do feel at home here. So, uh, I will probably end my career here, but, um, I, I am eternally <laughs> grateful for them and, and the support that they've shown me throughout the entirety of my career. Yeah, very cool. I mean, deserving too. Sorry, Jeff. Very yeah. deserving. Thank um, you. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, this must be the most different. I mean, you've you've seen a lot with this league, <laughs> even the previous league, but this is quite different of a year, obviously, for you. Um, and, you know, even from the PA position, um, what has this been like going through these these couple months, you know, on the field? You're just trying to, I mean, there's maybe not even an on the field element, really. You're just trying to do what you can. But uh, what has that been like juggling those those couple of roles and stepping into that, that role? And, and maybe you can just walk us through what you can of, you know, the PA and your, your role in, in getting to this point that we're finally back to talking about soccer that's forthcoming. Right. Um, I am so excited. I'm so excited that we are going to return to play, um, especially being one of the first leagues to do so. And in what I believe I'm confident in the fact that we're going to be able to safely do that too. Um, I think you know, I, I hold the title of president, but I think it's more of a collective um, executive board along with all of our, our board of representatives that represent their teams. We have two per team. Um, and then, you know, the collectivity of, the, of all of the players that are in the league, you know, voicing what they need and what they want out of, out of this tournament when it, didn't come, when it did come to fruition. Um, I think that was really important. And I think, you know, we kind of sit in a, uni in a unique situation that we only have nine teams. So we're dealing with a smaller number of players, say, from some of the other professional leagues. Um, and I actually, I'm excited for that because I think we were able to secure certain things that were, were really important to players um, moving forward, whether they play in the tournament or not, honestly. And um, I think at the height of things, when decisions were being made, things were happening in real time. And to be able to communicate that and have go the good lines of communication, we, we kind of put those in place in this, this past year in 2019. I think we really solidified those lines and also have a great relationship with the league. Um, I'm not sure how that works in every other league, but I, I believe that we have a really good relationship with Lisa um, and, and the rest of her staff. But I think the communication was really important, even if there was nothing to communicate at a period during quarantine or stay at home. I think um, it was really important to to tell our players that we were we, we were working as hard as we could um, with the league and trying to determine what things look like moving forward, because, you know, it, in the global landscape of things, everyone, there's so much uncertainty right now. And to provide a little bit of certainty and, you know, potentially some entertainment for people, I think is going to be really, really awesome. Yeah. Tori, I want to stay on the tournament for a little bit longer because just you talking through that and the communication and how closely you guys as a PA worked with the players and with NWSL, what sticks out to me is, is the player's choice to play. How important was that to you guys as a PA and why was that so important? Yeah, I think, um, 
you know, Jeff, you said this is completely different than any other season thus far. Um, and that is specifically because of the pandemic. And there are some, you know, there might be people that are not comfortable playing and that is okay. And we wanted to provide them with that choice, but also um, with some stability and some certainty that they would be paid throughout the year. And um, we were able to do that. The league, you know, show good faith that they were able to work with us on that. Um, and I think that that is probably one of the most important things that we have done thus far as an organization. It's huge. And it's so cool to see that and to see who you guys are. You're fighting for every player. You're fighting for the players who feel comfortable to play. You're fighting for those who might not know yet and you're fighting for the ones that don't and I think that coming in there together you guys really made a statement and it was a really positive statement yeah absolutely thank you yeah you have to love to hear that especially I mean we were talking about the ups and downs of your career and the positive um, aspect of you being with one team but just I think a lot of times with um, even Lisa said it like you know the end of sale can be thought of as like a small business so not only is there uncertainty in the in the world but a lot of times uncertainty in the league with the navigating and looking to find something that's really going to continue to solidify and make continue to make it the best league in the world and hearing that collaboration and the statements that yeah and brooke were putting out just you like love to hear that and it sounds like lisa came in at the right time so um yeah definitely Shifting gears, though, I mean, we know or most people would know you on the field, uh, but off the field, um, took your B license for coaching last year, um, uncertain what that's going to look like coming coming into this year. Um, but is that something that you want to get involved in? Um, is that something you look forward to post playing career? Yeah, so I did. I completed my C license. That was OK. Me Sorry. At the beginning. of It's OK at the beginning of this year and um, grateful again to the league for providing that opportunity with um, US soccer and their, their coaching, um, their coaching education organization. Um, but I, this past off season did um, a number of different things that I wanted to do and just try, because I'm reaching the end of my career, I'm trying to figure out exactly what that looks like for me. Um, and I've been interested in coaching. I, I'm not ready to leave the game yet. And if coaching provides me another pathway to continue to stay in and around the game, um, that is probably the reason behind doing, doing the, the coaching license. And um, luckily, the past two years, the league has provided that for, for us for free. And to those two groups could potentially, um, we, we were headed towards being able to complete our B license this year. But um, right now, that's a little bit up in the air, and we're trying to focus on what the season looks like. But um, the uh, the opportunities that the league is providing for us off the field are really great as well. Um, that is something that is paramount for the PA is to provide certain opportunities like that too. And we'll look to do more things similar to that in the future for for all of our members. Um, but yeah, it, it's, I'm not exactly sure what that looks like <laughs> in my future, but um, coaching it runs, in my, runs in my family. So, um, well, I know people definitely. are probably happy too that you were saying you're not ready to retire yet. That's probably <laughs> news to, or good news to a lot of people's ears, right? <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, Tori, if you're looking back, you've played soccer now for a large chunk of your life. If you're looking back at, at that girl who dreamt of being a professional soccer player when she was really young, did you ever think that this would be your career? Did you ever imagine it would be as vast as it has become? Um, I, you know, that's a tough question. Um, I'm not sure I'm really vision oriented. I kind of go more day to day. Um, and I think that when I was little, I certainly wanted to play professional sports and I wanted to be a professional athlete. Um, and then as I uh, played, played different sports growing up, um, I just, I could not fall out of love with soccer in any way. I was, I've been committed to it since I was four years old. It's probably the only thing I've been committed to aside from my family um, for as long as I have. And uh, I think 
I'm, I'm, I have surprised myself that I have stayed in the game for so long because I do have so many interests outside of soccer. Um, but honestly, I, you know, I live and breathe it and I don't know what I would be doing outside of it. Clearly I, I'm taking a coaching course. I'm not sure if I'm <laughs> going to be a coach, um, but it's definitely, it's provided so much stability for me, even, even when women's soccer itself has been unstable. Um, I, I think my career has been, um, it's been good timing for me specifically because NWSL has been around and I've been, I've been fortunate to have that. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's one of those things that is, I think it's always going to be in, in my blood, in my life. And, um, I'm still really enjoying it despite being 30 years old and, um, hope to no, that's young. More, yeah. a few more years <laughs> out of these legs. I was like your grandma when we were playing together. <laughs> <laughs> With your three stumps, yep. <laughs> well, I want to relate the uh, your wider career to the name of this this challenge cup. You took the challenge on of, I know, cheesy. Thank you. Um, I like you it. Took the, <laughs> you took on the challenge. You're, you're basically a central midfielder that played fullback last year. We talked about that a little bit recently. But, uh, I mean, there's got to be a lot of squad rotation here. Where are we going to see you on the field this year? Ooh. Um, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> Um, I believe that I will probably be a fullback again. Um, I think in our system, that position is kind of played like a midfielder. So I think I, I suit that position even still and can provide a little more experience along our back line too. Um, it's funny, Richie always brings up, Richie and Steve, our owner as well always bring up the fact that they that Richie put me back at right back and he's like there's two positions on the there's two positions in soccer one on the field and off the field or on the bench <laughs> um so you know wherever wherever they need me I'll play and yeah. I, I feel like that has been my motto for my entire career I think I've totally. played in every position <laughs> yeah yeah so and it gets it, you back into the midfield I know you played a lot of attacking midfield growing up too so maybe maybe gets you in that attacking bone right like yeah I know that you like that yeah I like getting forward for sure I think <laughs> I've always wanted to assist more than I have wanted to score goals which is probably why I don't score many goals but um, <laughs> I like being part of the attack and um, I think being versatile on both sides of the ball is uh, definitely one of my strengths yeah one of the things you just mentioned too is you have so many interests off the field as well. One of the things that sticks out to me is your work with uh, children fighting uh, childhood cancer. And you've done a lot with the Young and the Brave Foundation and now most recently with St. Jude. What is it that has led you into that role, into wanting to help out these kids more? Yeah, I definitely think growing up, my experience with cancer had more to do with um, adults and uh, elderly. And then uh, I think it was a couple years into college, one of my best friends um, who was around the same age as me uh, had cancer. And um, seeing her struggle through that, seeing her family go through that um, was very difficult. Um, she found comfort and solace in the Young and Brave Foundation, which is why I initially got involved with them. And then um, I kind of wanted to do a little bit more local work in the past couple of years. And St. Jude, it was a match made in heaven. They came forward to the spirit as uh, I think within the day that I had approached our media team about me doing more charitable work um, in hospitals and stuff like that. So it honestly worked out really well. Again, timing is everything. And um, some of the work that I've done, I actually went to the research hospital in Memphis this past year to see what that was like. Honestly, amazing. Um, they're doing really great work there, not only with the actual families, but also with the research and they share all of their research through globally. Um, they have a lot of doctors that come from different countries and um, they make sure and ensure that no family that is a St. Jude or has a St. Jude patient ever has to pay a bill. So they, they're doing events all the time, um, even virtual events at this point, um, actually going to be doing a juggling competition challenge. Um, Let's go this, this week. I think Jordy is involved with that too. So I'm excited about that just to raise money because honestly, every little bit helps at this point. 
You should do this at um, during the Challenge Cup, the Challenge Tournament, getting players and raising money. And I mean, I think that'd be a cool. We were just when we were talking to Lisa, coming up with a skills challenge. But I think there's different ways that like players can raise money for different organizations that they care deeply about. Get more players yeah. involved. Definitely. If you want, I think, but do yeah, it. No, exactly. no I, think there's, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's always like, there is always so much benefit in finding ways to, to give back. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's, um, it's something that is an obligation for professional athletes, but it's definitely our responsibility, I think, to, you know, put out good vibes and, and do good for, for the, our local, our local groups, our country. Um, I think there's always so much benefit to be had just in, you know, trying to help out. Yeah. I just loved when Lori said that, uh, do it if you want, but just do it because yeah. how many times do we hear that on the field, Tori? All the time. <laughs> always yelling. Oh, you two saying that to me? You mean? No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> right. I was the old lady that stood in the middle and made you two run. It was perfect. Yes. Yes. Just do it. Um, <laughs> Tori, we're so thankful. I think I can't leave this without telling everybody that I'm Jordan Angeli. That's Tori Houston in the corner. We're not the same person. <laughs> I took a red card for her once. And so um, thank you for letting oh, me get wow. into let, get, get into the NWSL record books with that. I for wish months. I had the photo before this to put it on there because I have a photo of Lori Lindsay. So upset with the referee when that happened. Oh, I, I remember that photo. It's yeah. like a perfect in glory face, too. It was in a perfect Portland. glory face, yeah. yeah. In Portland. Listen, it so, was a tough um, year, hey, everybody. We've been through a lot, you guys. We can get through this, too. Uh, Tori, just thank you so much for not only all that work that you do off the field, talking about St. Jude there, but for all the work that you do on the pitch for what you've done with the NWSL Players Association. We are excited for the Challenge Cup. We can't wait to see you guys compete again. So thanks so much for joining us. Me too, guys. Thanks so much for all you guys do as well. Um, hopefully this is fun for everyone to watch. I'm sure with your guys' personalities, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, bye, Tori. Tori. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. bye. Oh, my God. You guys, I had to get that story in. You know it. I'd forgotten about that. That's a great piece of trivia. Oh, Jeff. I remember that. They don't. I don't think they did. They correct that. You did, you had to stay suspended, right? Oh, I say. Yep, I stayed. They suspended. They didn't even correct that. No, I sat the next game in. Yeah, my two. That was like my only start. One of my only starts, and then I just take me out the next game. I'm done. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You guys, there's been so many good comments. I'm trying to um, get back to some of them here. Uh, I liked this from Jackie Hernandez, just talking about happy that the NWSL is taking a lead role in being involved in this planning and getting back to safe play. I think that's one of the things we're most excited about is a league that we love and we know the quality on the pitch is really high that we can be one of the first back and show, okay, it is possible. And just what, what we were saying with Tori that not everybody has to play if they don't feel comfortable. Yeah. Well, I mean, apparently I need to clear my schedule for Monday because I right? guess we're getting <laughs> group draws and schedules. I'm ready to definitely talk about some matchups. She was, Lisa was saying she wanted to know what matchups we want to see. I want to see like the chaos mm. matchups. Some rivalries. Let's yeah. see it in the preliminary stage. Right. It will be interesting. I mean, given the circumstances, um, you know, with the limited preparation leading up to this point in time, what players and what teams have been able to what they can put out in the field. So I think there is some. There will be some mix up in terms of potential teams that are dominate or have as much success as they've had in the past. So yeah. all exciting stuff. We'll see. Yeah. Um, how about this? I know I wouldn't want to be a part of this challenge. How many players can be nutmegged by Tobin's skill challenge? No, thank you. I've, I've already been that player. I don't need to do it again, right? <laughs> um, a couple more things here. Uh, anything else that stands out from either one of those conversations? Maybe, Lori, for you, something that you take away from this, um, thinking about the Challenge Cup coming up? Well, I think it's, we kind of touched it on with both of um, Lisa and Tori, which is just the 
the sheer collaboration, I think, from the Players Association and the league, I think that was imperative um, coming into this. I, I think regardless, that even if we've had experiences at pandemic, we, it is, or pandemic, sorry, um, we needed to see more collaboration, more voices from the players. And, um, and I think we've seen that. And I love the fact, and we would know this, Jordan being former players is that to be able to feel empowered to be able to make the decision that's right for you because there's so many different athletes that play in this league that have different circumstances and mm -hmm. they need to feel protected within that decision and um, that that's what stood out the most the collaboration and the being able yeah. to feel empowered with the guaranteed contracts and health insurance to be able to make the decision that works best for that individual right Jeff yeah, I've seen a lot of questions about the guarantees and, and people wondering, and I think that's worth reiterating that play, not play, it's individual decision and and everybody still has access to that through 2020 pay and, and insurance. So I think that's huge. Um, Lisa coming in with the marketing background, I think is something the league has really needed. We're seeing sponsorship already, some good ideas, obviously, around um, some activation, even in these challenging times. And then, um, yeah, looking forward to to seeing some, uh, some games on the field. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, obviously there are some health concerns and, and I think, you know, from what we've seen and I wrote about this, I mean, everything they've done as much as they possibly can, and they've put it in a location that they feel is, as, you know, as safe as possible. And, and then from there, everything is kind of come together in terms of the sponsorship, the venue availability. Mm -hmm. Um, and then obviously the number one thing is, this doesn't happen without the player buy-in and the player buy-in happened because they're comfortable enough as a group to do this. Right. There's a lot of good points there. And one of the things that I liked to see was this, we're talking about the challenge cup and we also heard it. it's going to be a different store, a uh, different trophy. Could the winner of the challenge cup get a little C over their crest? I think they also mentioned, what about putting it on the, on a shoulder, like a patch on the shoulder? I think that's a good idea because you never know what this could lead to, right? And what could yeah. um, come out of this. I would love to see something competitive too. Sorry, Lori. Yeah. Like there, there are leagues, we've seen this a little bit in the lower division on the men's side in the US, but I mean, there are leagues who have spring and fall split seasons where you win one and it there's a reward for the other season. So maybe a Challenge Cup winner has some kind of a perk. I mean, I know next year is a long way away, but some kind of a playoff berth that's automatic next year, no matter their yeah. performance yeah. in 2021, something, right. something that rewards them beyond that's this. That's an interesting comment. Well, I think this I also, is a matchup someone wants to see. Yeah. I mean, all the matchups at this point in time, you're just excited to see soccer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Jeff, I think you make a fantastic point. And I mean, I think with the unknowns and that's talking with Lisa about the uncertainty of the fall, um, or what what the NWSL looks like after this tournament. Um, is this going to be seeding for the draft? You know, obviously Louisville's coming in. Like, are they going to have to use this tournament? So I think there's going to be half. Weird. It's going to be a lot more competitive um, based on some of the unknowns than, yeah. than maybe we predict. So that's so funny, right? As you said, draft pick, honestly, right? The second before this comment came in. So um, the, the Red <laughs> Stars are going to win it. That's a funny joke, too, because we know the Red <laughs> Stars just dominate the draft. Um, so, such great conversation. And I liked having it, too, at this early time, giving you guys an opportunity to not only hear from Lisa Baird, but also Tori Huster. Uh, one of the things that is up next, it's Thursday night. So there is an NWSL remix, uh, that rematch on Twitch. So you can go check out the North Carolina Courage versus Orlando Pride game. That's a matchup back from September 30th, 2017. So that's on Twitch starting in just a couple of minutes. Uh, Jeff, Lori, thank you guys so much. It has been a pleasure uh, chatting with you guys and chatting with our guests today. I think it was a really great show and um, it wouldn't be that great if it weren't for you guys. So I appreciate your work. Good yes, job. wonderful. Thanks, job, Jordy. Buddy. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, really thank you guys it. so much for joining and that's it from us. We'll see you guys next week. Good night, everybody.